This is lesson 2.6, and today we're going to be talking about energy level calculations. I'm actually not going to make this a long lesson. Instead, you guys are going to take some more time to do the calculations yourselves, and hopefully when you do the calculations, you're going to get a better appreciation and understanding of what these energy levels really are. We're going to be looking specifically at the energy levels in the hydrogen atom because they're simpler and they're going to help us understand the energy levels in other atoms as well. So for hydrogen, the energy of any of its energy levels is equal to this constant here divided by n squared. And n stands for the energy level number. So the first energy level is when n equals 1. The second energy level is when n equals 2, etc., etc. Now, the value of n is always going to be a natural number. You can't have 2.5 or 3.7 or negative 1 or anything like that, right? Because the value of n tells you which number of energy level you're talking about. And remember, we said that the energy level essentially says that is the energy that the electron is allowed to have. It can't have in between energy levels because in between energies would mean that you don't have a nice standing wave for the electron. Remember, electrons behave as waves, and because they behave as waves, they have only certain allowed energies which correspond to nice, stable, standing waves for the electron in the atom. Another interesting feature of this equation right here is that this is a negative number. So your energies for the energy levels are always going to be negative. Well, why is that? What's the deal with these negative energies for energy levels? Well, we're not going to worry too much about the negatives and positives here for energy, but I want you to realize that this is negative because it's going down. It's going down a hill. So chemists and scientists in general basically take an energy of zero to mean that the electron is all by itself without any atom nearby. However, if there's a proton nearby, then the electron is attracted to that proton and the energy goes down down, similar to some massive object going down a hill, right? And so that massive object is now going closer to the Earth's center. And when it does, its gravitational potential energy decreases. And so in a similar fashion, when a positive object like a proton comes close to a negative object like an electron, their potential energy will decrease because they're becoming closer together. Now, that's what's happening with these energy levels. As you get closer and closer to the nucleus, then that energy of the electron is going to become more and more negative. It's going to go down lower and lower. All right. So let's go ahead and do some calculations here to try to make some sense of it. Now, number one here says that we need to calculate the energy of a whole bunch of different energy levels for the hydrogen atom. Now, I want you to note here, now you don't have to do this exactly this way, but energy level one should be the lowest energy level. That is where the electron has the lowest possible potential energy because it's the closest it can possibly be to the nucleus. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down lower to represent its lower energy. So that's going to be n equals 1, right? Or you could just say E1 equals this value, all right? And then I'm going to above it write n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, etc., etc., and you can write more and more energy levels as you go up. Noting that n equals 1 is the lowest energy level, so I'm going to write it down low. So let's go ahead and do a calculation here. I'm not going to do all of them right now. I'm going to do just one of these sample calculations. Okay, so how would we do this? The equation is very simple. It is the energy of the energy level is this negative number, negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules divided by n squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write that number in my calculator. Negative 2.178. And we're going to use second comma for that exponential part. So that's going to be e negative 8. We're going to take that number and divide by n squared. So let me just start with, let's say, n equals 2. Okay, so 2 squared is 4. So let's divide by 4. And that's going to be this number right here. So that's going to be negative 
four, five times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That is the energy of the second energy level of the hydrogen atom. And I'm going to go ahead and do this again for n equals five. All right. And so I can literally just retype what I had in my calculator. So let's do, I can do second entry and all that pops up. And all I need to do is change the value of the denominator, right? So there I divide by four, but let's suppose I'm doing n equals five. If I'm doing n equals five, then that's going to be five squared in the denominator. Five squared is of course 25. So that's going to be divided by 25 instead of divide by four. And let's see what that is. Now that's going to be negative 8.712 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. And you should be able to get answers for all of these. And we're going to use these numbers on the next page to do calculations for what happens when the electron goes from one energy level to another energy level. You have seen this diagram before in class, and it's a very nice diagram to show you guys what's going on. So let's suppose the electron is up here in energy level four, and it drops all the way back down to energy level one, then it's going to give off a photon in the process. And the photon's energy is going to correspond to the difference in energy of those energy levels. Why? Because that electron has a certain amount of energy up here, and it's going to drop down in energy when it drops down in energy, it loses energy, but the energy isn't lost. Instead, the energy is converted into light energy, all right? And so that's where that photon comes from. It's basically corresponding to conservation of energy, and the energy that is lost by the electron equals the energy of that photon that's given off, okay? Or conversely, let's suppose an electron starts in energy level one, and goes up to energy level two. Well, how could it possibly do that? It could do that if you give it energy somehow, and one way to give an electron energy is to shine light on it. So if you shine a certain amount of light on it, the electron from energy level one can jump up to energy level two, and so it can absorb a photon in that case, and when it absorbs a photon, the photon's energy that it absorbs is going to correspond to the difference in energy of energy levels one and two, because that's the amount of energy it needs to jump up that high. If the photon has more energy, then the electron might be able to jump up to energy level three or energy level four, depending on the energy of the photon that is absorbed. So let's go ahead and calculate some of these energies. We're going to try a sample problem where the electron is going from n equals five, so energy level five, down to n equals two. So electron is going from energy level five down to energy level two, and a photon's being given off. And the photon that's given off is going to have the energy corresponding to that loss in energy, the energy difference between energy level five and energy level two. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so we already said that for n equals five, the energy value of that energy level is negative 8.712 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. And for n equals 2, that has an energy of negative 5.445 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is a larger absolute value number, right? So it's more negative than this one. And so if the electron goes from n equals five down to n equals two, then it's going to be losing energy, All right? Let's go ahead and calculate that energy difference. And if we're going from n equals five to n equals two, that's going to be e two minus e five, we typically do the final state minus the initial state to get the difference in energy. And let's do that calculation. So we have the previous number right there. And let's do E2 is negative 5.445 to the negative 19th. That's the final state minus and I just calculated E5, so I'm going to go ahead and use my previous answer rather than retyping it. I'm just going to do second answer, 
and that's going to get me what? All right, the difference in energy is negative 4.57, round that up to 4, times 10 to the minus 19 joules, okay? So that's the difference in energy between these. Because this is negative, it means that our electron has lost energy. But that's just about all that negative sign means. We're not going to worry too much about negatives and positives, but I want you guys to know what's going on. Is the electron gaining energy? Is the electron losing energy? And in this case, this negative sign tells us that the electron is losing energy, okay? So it's lost this much energy. Now, we don't need to stop there. We can actually use this information to say, okay, so when the electron loses energy, it gives off that energy in the form of a photon. Well, we can say a lot about that photon now, right? Because the energy of the photon is that. Now, photons never have negative energy. So the energy that is lost is going to be the energy of the photon given off. So photon given off has an energy, and we can just write it this way, of the same number, 4.574 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. I've just made that positive because it's now the energy of the photon. The electron has lost energy, and all the energy that is lost has gone into that photon, creating that photon. But more than that, we can say not just the energy of the photon, but we can also calculate the wavelength and the frequency of the photon if we wanted to. Remember that the energy of a photon is equal to h nu. So this is Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's calculate the frequency then. So we divide both sides by h. So the frequency of the photon is going to be the energy divided by h. Now, all you need to do if you have h stored in your calculator is take that previous answer and divide by h. And that should give you the frequency. And this is a negative number, but the frequency is going to be a positive number. Remember that this energy here is a positive number. The energy of a photon is always going to be a positive number. Remember, the negative value just tells you that this photon is given off. It tells you that the electron is losing energy and the photon is given off. But the energy of the photon is always going to be positive and the frequency also has to be positive. And so the frequency of the photon is 6.903 times 10 to the 14th. And the units for that are going to be what? The units for frequency are always in hertz. That is waves per second. Or you can remember that the energy is in joules. H is in joules seconds. So joules over joules cancel and you're left with per seconds. Well, per seconds are the same as hertz. So the frequency is 6.903 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Next, let's go ahead and calculate the wavelength of that. And you can do that using the equation C equals lambda nu. If you want to solve for the wavelength, we're going to divide both sides by the frequency. So the wavelength is C over the frequency. And all you need to do in your calculator then is do C divided by your previous answer, which gives us 4.343 times 10 to the negative 7. And what are my units? Units are meters for wavelength, right? That makes sense. A length should be in meters. And it also makes sense because C is in meters per second and the frequency is in per seconds. And so the per seconds over per seconds cancel, leaving you just with meters for the units of wavelength. Let's go ahead and put this wavelength in prefix notation. And so there is no prefix for 10 to the minus 7, but there is a prefix for a smaller exponent that is 10 to the minus 9. Remember, 10 to the minus 9 is nano. And so what I can do is, if I'm going to convert this from 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 9, if the exponent here becomes smaller by a factor of 100, this number right here needs to become bigger by a factor of 100. 
So I'm going to move that decimal point one, two spots to the right, and that's going to get me 434.3 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that means this is 434.3 nanometers. That's the wavelength of the photon given off when electron goes from energy level 5 down to energy level 2. So in summary, when an electron in a hydrogen atom goes from energy level 5 down to energy level 2, the electron loses energy and it loses this much energy. And that same amount of energy is given off in the form of a photon. And so the energy of the photon given off is this. And then the frequency of that photon is this. And the wavelength of that photon is this. Now, what if an electron in hydrogen were to go from energy level 2 up to energy level 5? How would that be different? Well, actually, the calculations would all be the same. But in that case, rather than the electron losing energy and a photon being given off, instead, the electron is going to gain energy and the electron is going to need to gain this much energy. And it needs to absorb a photon that has this frequency and this wavelength. All right, have a great rest of your day and get to work on those homework problems. Stay curious.